Last night, around 7.25 p.m., the coast of Oregon was shaken by an earthquake of magnitude 6.0. And man, when the news started circulating, social media went into panic mode. People immediately began asking, is this the sign? Is the famous big one from Cascadia finally coming? Let me tell you something I discovered after spending hours analyzing the official USGS data. The answer will surprise you, but before that, I need you to understand exactly what happened yesterday. The epicenter of this earthquake was approximately 183 miles, 295 kilometers, off the coast, more specifically west of the small town of Bandon, Oregon. The depth was quite shallow, between 2.5 and 4.3 miles, 4 and 7 kilometers, below the ocean floor. As of the last update, about 51 people reported feeling the tremor, which is relatively few considering the magnitude. And here's the detail that many people missed in the news. This earthquake didn't happen in the Cascadia subduction zone. It happened in a completely different geological structure called the Blanco Fracture Zone. You must be thinking, but wait, what's the difference? And look, this difference is absolutely critical to understanding whether or not we should worry. So listen, I'm going to explain this in a way that makes sense. The Blanco Fracture Zone is what geologists call a transform fault. Think about it like this. Imagine two tectonic plates sliding past each other like two wooden planks scraping horizontally. That's exactly what happens at Blanco. It sits right there in the middle of the ocean separating the Juan de Fuca plate from the Pacific plate. And you know what's interesting? Earthquakes like this are super common in that region. In fact, the Blanco Fracture Zone produces earthquakes frequently, and when I say frequently, I mean there have been several events of magnitude 5, 6, and even larger there in recent years. Now comes the part that really matters. The Cascadia Subduction Zone, which is the one everyone fears, is located about 124 miles, 200 kilometers, closer to the coast. 124 miles. It might not seem like much on a global map, but in geological terms, man, it's an enormous distance between fault systems. And the difference isn't just location. Cascadia is a subduction zone, which means one tectonic plate is literally diving beneath the other. It's like, imagine pushing a rug under a couch. Eventually, the friction will accumulate so much energy that something has to give. And when it gives in a subduction zone, the movement is vertical. The ocean floor suddenly rises or falls, displacing millions of tons of water and generating devastating tsunamis. Now answer me something. Do you think an earthquake 124 miles away on a completely different fault with a completely different type of movement would really affect Cascadia? Dr. Paul Bowden, who is the manager of the Sephora Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at the University of Washington, so we're talking about a guy who literally monitors this region 24 hours a day, he was very direct when asked about this. He said that the earthquake at the Blanco Fracture Zone has nothing to do with the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Nothing. Zero relation. And look, there's a very solid scientific reason for this. When an earthquake happens, it releases energy and can cause changes in the stress on surrounding rocks. But these stress changes don't travel very far. Maybe just a few rupture lengths of the fault. The largest earthquake in this swarm at Blanco probably had a rupture of only a few miles. That energy simply doesn't reach Cascadia with enough intensity to make a difference. Furthermore, and here it gets kind of technical, but it's important, the crust in that Blanco region is super young. It was formed geologically speaking recently at the Juan de Fuca Ridge. Young crust is more, how can I explain? It's more flexible, you know? It absorbs stress changes differently than old brittle crust. It's like the difference between squeezing a new sponge and squeezing an old cracker. The sponge absorbs the pressure, the cracker breaks into many small pieces. So if this earthquake isn't a sign of the big one, what would be? That's the million dollar question, and look, I'm going to be honest with you. Scientists still don't have a definitive answer, but they have observed some interesting patterns. The Cascadia subduction zone has a behavior that seismologists call episodic tremor and slow slip. It's as if the fault is, I don't know if sliding is the right word, it's more like it's slowly adjusting itself, releasing small amounts of energy over time. These tremors happen regularly every 13 to 16 months deep in the subduction zone at a depth between 17 and 28 miles, 28 and 45 kilometers. People don't feel these movements, they're too slow, but geodetic instruments can measure them. And here's something fascinating I discovered. The highest density of tremor activity in Cascadia occurs from northern Washington to southern Vancouver Island, and also in Northern California. 
Scientists monitor this through the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network's semi-automated tremor detection system. Why does this matter? Because significant changes in these patterns, like a sudden and abnormal increase in the frequency or intensity of these tremors, that could indeed be an indicator that something bigger is brewing. But that's not what we're seeing now. Actually, let me give you some historical context that will make everything clearer. The last Great Cascadia earthquake happened on January 26th, 1700. It's not a guess. Scientists know the exact date because this earthquake, which had an estimated magnitude of 9.0, generated a tsunami so massive that it crossed the entire Pacific Ocean and hit Japan. The Japanese have kept meticulous records of natural disasters since approximately 600 AD, and they documented a tsunami of approximately 16 feet, 5 meters in height, that struck the coast of Honshu Island on that date. Since no earthquake had been recorded in Japan that could cause that tsunami, scholars called it an orphan tsunami. It was only decades later, when scientists began studying the geological records of the Pacific Northwest, that the connection was made. So 325 years have passed since that event. And geological studies show that these mega earthquakes occur in Cascadia at intervals ranging from 300 to 600 years. And now comes the part that really needs your attention. The probability of an earthquake of magnitude 7.1 or greater happening in the Cascadia subduction zone in the next 50 years is approximately 37%. Let that sink in for a second. 37%. Many people hear this and think, oh, so there's a 63% chance it won't happen. I'm cool. But man, in terms of geological risks, 37% is an extremely high probability. To give you an idea, it's roughly the same chance as you flipping heads three times in a row with a coin. Would you bet your family's safety on that? I certainly wouldn't. And there's another piece of data that's even more concerning. A recent study published this year showed that a major earthquake in Cascadia wouldn't just cause the earthquake and tsunami that everyone already imagines. The study by Dr. Tina Dura, who is an assistant professor of geosciences at Virginia Tech, revealed something many people hadn't considered. When Cascadia ruptures, the land along the coast will literally sink. The sudden subsidence would be 1.6 to 6.5 feet, 0 0.5 to 2 meters. Imagine waking up after an earthquake and discovering that the sea level relative to your home has risen 6.5 feet instantly. Areas that are safe today would become permanently floodable. The study showed this would more than double the number of residents, structures, and roads exposed to flooding. We're talking about more than 14,350 additional residents, 22,500 structures, and 483 miles, 777 kilometers, of roads that would suddenly be in the flood zone. And look, there's more, including five airports, 18 critical facilities like schools and hospitals, eight sewage treatment plants. So when people ask if they should worry about Cascadia, the honest answer is yes, absolutely but not because of yesterday's earthquake at the Blanco Fracture Zone. They should worry because Cascadia is a real, documented, scientific threat that will eventually happen. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. The good news? Unlike 325 years ago, today we have real-time monitoring technology, tsunami warning systems, earthquake-ready building codes, and most importantly, knowledge. Coastal communities in Washington, Oregon, and Northern California are conducting regular evacuation drills. If you live in these regions or know someone who does, here's my sincere advice after diving into all this data. Prepare yourself. Put together an emergency kit with supplies for at least two weeks. Have an evacuation plan. Know where to go if there's a tsunami warning. Strengthen your home if possible. But don't panic because of every earthquake that happens in the region. Science clearly shows us that not every tremor is a harbinger of the big one.